Hey, that was facing me. That one I hit. All right, so we're going to start off with the most basic of conversations, but it's really, really important for your understanding of algebra, and that's this equal sign. Up to this point, we only had expressions. We never knew what the expression was equal to. Now that they're going to tell you that it's equal to something, you're going to be able to figure out what x is equal to, and that's this process that we're going to go through. In order for you to understand how to do that, I'm just going to lead you through a progression of very simple steps that when we get to the end, you'll understand to be able to see how we got there. Okay? So if I tell you that x is equal to 2, what I'm saying is that this side of my equation is exactly equal to that side of the equation. Does that make sense? Yeah. The equal sign says that those two sides, this side, the left side, and the right side are exactly equal to each other. Everybody good with that part right there? Mm -hmm. If I were to choose to add 2 to both sides of my equal sign, is that equation still balanced? Does this side still equal that side? Yes. yes. Everybody's good with that? Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to change this to 4. And over here, I'm going to remind myself that I simply added 2. So if everybody's good with that, that's something that you're allowed to do now forever and ever. As long as you do it to both sides of the equation, you can add whatever number you want to both sides. It won't work for this now because x isn't always going to be equal to 1. Sometimes it might be, but it could be anything now. All right, so if we're allowed to do that, what if I said, well, I want two of these on one side and two of those on the other. So I did 2 times x plus 2 is equal to 4 times 2. Would everybody agree that if one of them over here was equal to one of them over there, then kind of logically, two of them on this side would be equal to two of them on that side? Does that make sense? Yes. Oh, now I get this. Okay. So what I just told you then is that you're always allowed to multiply, as long as you do it to both sides of the equal sign, by whatever number you want. I could have chosen to multiply it by 16. The theory would have been the same. If one of them is equal to, on this side, it's equal to one of them on that side, then 16 of them on this side would be equal to 16 of them on that side. All good? Okay. So I'm going to just change that to 8. And remind myself that all we did from here to here was multiplied by 2. Everybody good still? Well, what if I wanted to divide both sides by 4? Think about what division is. If I had two of these things, well, whatever it is, if I have this amount over here, and I take a fourth of it, which is basically dividing by four, so if this was equal to that, is a fourth of this also equal to a fourth of that? Does it make sense that if I multiply by two to both sides, it's equal? And then would it make sense if I took a fourth of both sides, would they still be equal? Is that equation still balanced? I think yes, it makes sense to me, but this is an important step. So do you ag will you agree that as long as you divide both sides by the same number, it's something that you're allowed to do? Yes? Mm -hmm. Mr. Hampshire, and is that because it maintains the balance? Yep. If I take a fourth of this and a fourth of that, since this was equal to that, they're still equal. That balance, you, you know what a balance is when we say, keep saying the word balance? Mm -hmm. Did you do hands-on equation with Ms. Angie last year? There was a little orange card with a balance, and you put little pawns on one side and the other side. Maybe it wasn't orange, but I think you said something. I think orange. we did something like it, but I don't think they remember. All right, so think of a balance, you know, like in the... the scale? Yeah, scale, like the Lady Liberty when she's holding the, the thing, and you put things on either side, and sometimes it tips that way, which means this is heavier than that. What? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. A scale, a balance. 
Theoretically, it is a balance. It's not a scale. Yeah, it's like. Yeah, there's plates on top like that, yeah. and it puts stuff here, and it tips down. Yeah. You know, that's heavier than that side. Yeah, that's a balance. It's theoretically not a scale, but... That's what we called it. Yeah. Well, it's a balance! Yeah. All right, so now I'm just going to kind of finish this out, just simplify it, okay? Two-fourths, two divided by four, I can just change that to one-half. Okay, so one-half of that is the same thing. And then 8 divided by 4 is just 2. So from here to here, I divide it by 4. Still good? Mm -hmm. What if I just wanted to randomly subtract 8 from both sides? Would I be allowed to do it like this? If I subtract the same amount from both sides, am I maintaining that balance? I think you must. I think you mean that to be an X. Clearly, that is an X. Ms. Wrigley, what is it that you're talking about? I only see an X. No, that didn't work at all, did it? <laughs> Thank you. Much prettier. Sort of. Kind of like an X with a peg leg. All right, so would we agree then? If I, as long as I subtracted 8 from both sides, I'm allowed to do that? Yes or no? Yes. Yes? Okay. So I'm just going to combine that now to say 2 minus 8 is negative 6. Okay, and then what did I do from here to here? Minus 8. I subtracted 8. Everybody good? That's all there is to algebra. If you followed along and you saw and you agreed that yes, as long as I do it to both sides, I can add any number. And yes, as long as I do it to both sides, I can multiply by any number. And yes, as long as I do it to both sides, I can divide by any number. And yes, as long as I do it to both sides, I can subtract any number. That's, the, that's what you're allowed to do. You're allowed to do anything you want as long as you do it to both sides of the equation. I could even add an x to both sides of the equation and it wouldn't change it. Okay? That's algebra and that's exactly how easy the steps are. The only thing difficult is knowing what to do when. Okay? That's why I did these things here. Because what we're going to do now is we're going to take this equation and we're going to go the reverse. That's how you solve things. You take the equation they give you and you do the reverse of how they got there. So when we started with x is 2, we added 2 and then we multiplied by 2 and then we divided by 4 and then we subtracted 8. So now to go the opposite way, I'm going to do the opposite operation. So when I subtracted 8 from both sides, to go backwards, what do you think I'm going to do? Jenny, I'm going to add 8 to both sides, okay? So this plus that equals that. When I add 8 to both sides, I get that. So if this were my very first equation and I added 8, I would wind up with that, okay? Try to remember what that is because on the next page I'm going to write it. Okay. Negative six. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So we said we were going to add eight to it. So that's an equation that by the end of chapter four, you're going to be able to do yourself. But I'm going to follow it through just because you already did the reverse. Let's take the more difficult. And by the time we get down here, we're going to see that x equals two. If we were starting with this equation, having not, having not seen the previous page, how would they know to add? That's what you need chapter four for. Ah, okay. Okay? There is a simple answer to that, but it's, well, there's an answer to that, but it's not simple. Basically, you, you deal with all of your uh, addition and subtractions first, 
and then you deal with all of your additions and multiplications and divisions. So looking at that equation, we have a minus eight, so I know that I need to start with that. Yeah, and that's what we go through for chapter four, but for right now, I'm gonna add eight to both sides because that's what we did last on the other page. So they cancel out, and I'm left with one half of x plus two equals two. Okay, real quick flip back to the other page. Next, I divided by four. So what are we gonna do going in the opposite direction? Multiply Excellent, do I have to multiply both sides by four? Yeah. Darn tootin'. <laughs> so I did a bracket, which is when you have two sets of parentheses, the outside parentheses becomes a bracket. It doesn't serve any other function besides it's a parentheses that you because change Because there already was one set of parentheses. So half of four is two, x plus two is equal to eight. Everybody good? Mm-hmm. Quick flip, then I multiplied by two. So what am I going to do? I'm gonna divide both sides by two. Quick flip, I added two to go from there to there. So what am I gonna do now? I'm going in the reverse direction. I'm gonna subtract two. And that's how you get to x is equal to two. Ms. Wrigley? So I see in the initial equation where we got the eight to add eight and skip down two steps where we got the two and then the minus two. But if you go back to the step where we have the four, other than knowing we had it from the previous page, how would you know to multiply by four there? I could have chosen to do anything. Okay. This got me to a step that I was more comfortable with. That's the practice that they'll need. Since this is the kind of introduction to it, there's no real to say mm, the always blah, blah, blah. Okay. It's just, I knew that from more and more practice, if I multiplied both sides by four, I would have gotten to what I wanted to get. I could have multiplied both sides by half. I could have multi I could have divided both sides by four. But just to follow that progression, I wanted to do it okay. in the same way. Okay? So that's all you need by the end of chapter four. These are the skills, and like we've said before, knowing what to do when is going to be what chapter four gives you. Okay, but you can do this. It's just knowing when to do what skill.